The perfect drink. The perfect drink. The perfect drink. The perfect drink. The perfect drink is a podcast that combines amazing cocktails with the kind of infinite wisdom that can only come from a lifetime of poor decisions. So take a journey with everybody's favorite bartender. We can make some drinks, have some laughs, and who knows, you might even learn a thing or two. See you soon. Well, hey, everybody. It is old HRK here, everybody's favorite bartender, and it is time for another episode of The Perfect Drink. I am coming at you live, recorded, which is a term that I made up and isn't real, from my buddies in Chicago. Uh, Love this fucking place. Everybody here is awesome. We'll talk more about that in a little bit (laughs) as they walk by and give me the give me the most muscular man pose. Uh, So look, uh, I came up to the city today to do a podcast. I I would love to do the podcast here every week. I'm going to be honest. Getting old red up here is no joke. I got a fucking 89 Chevy 1500 that runs like a fucking gazelle. But driving it up here is, you know, it's serious fucking business. I get nervous. People look at me like I'm an asshole. I, everybody fucking hates me coming up. So uh, so I, I, it's hard to come up every week, but I like to come up as often as I can. And with that, what I li- would like to do is when I come up, have guests on. You know what I mean? It's, it's, because there's a lot of interesting people, obviously, and talented people in Chicago. So if when I came up, I had a guest that lived local, it would make sense. So I tried to get Dario, and uh, the, 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 the time didn't work out. He's a busy dude. You know, he's the, the, the fucking logo. You know, he's got shit going on all the time. And then, uh, so then I reached out to my friend Jenna, who's done the show before, um, the lovely Jenna Grish. And uh, she had a migraine or some bullshit. I don't know. You girls and your fucking migraines, whatever. Uh, so she couldn't do it. Uh, so here I am alone. And, uh, you know, whatever. It is what it is. But uh, I, I've gone. I walk a lonely road. It's the only road I've ever known. I think that's a Weezer song or something. So, you know, that's me. Uh, but Jenna, the, the point is of all of this fucking nonsense I'm saying is that I was planning on. Uh, I was planning on whoever the guest was kind of carrying the show. <laughs> and drinking a Michelob Ultra now to stay lean and mean. Uh, and, uh, you know, now there is no guest. So with that, then I, then I reached back out to Jenna and I said, hey, send me a couple emails. Send me a couple emails from your, you know, she does her show Real Talk with Jenna. And I said, send me a couple emails with your, of your people that, email into the show of their because she does a relationship show jesus christ i'm fumbling through this like a fucking monkey fucking a football anyways i said send me some questions because i don't have anything to fucking talk about today i don't know what the fuck i'm gonna do blah blah yada yada and she sent me some questions because she's a you know a great lady she helped me out and uh so we're gonna we're gonna do some some uh, relationship advice from a old hrk in a little bit um uh, and then, you know, I don't know, let's, uh, fuck, let's get it. Oh, oh, oh wait, hold on. I got to plug my show this Thursday, man, which is going to be in a couple days. I got a show at the forge in Joliet at fucking, uh, 8 PM doors open at seven. Get your ass up there. I'm going to be fucking hilarious. I promise. And then the following week I've got a show at Mojo's. Uh, and, uh, I'm writing a joke about terrorists and I think it, it's either going to be real funny or super fucking weird and offensive i don't know we'll see so if you want to hear my terrorist joke come to mojo's if you want to hear the stuff that i know works <laughs> come to the forge and Joliet. let's rip some shots i got to reach over here and press the button i got to give it to reach around hold on All right, music for ripping shots brought to you by Willard Wilcox. I'm just ripping a shot of Pink Whitney today, brought to you by Barstool Sports. Down the hatch, I fucking, uh, I applied for like a Barstool Sports, I sent in like a, like a video application, I suppose it's called, for a fucking Barstool Sports reality show, and didn't hear back, and I'm going to tell you, uh, it really fucking hurt, but... 
the best thing about being on the come up, which I would consider myself, is that every time someone passes on you, you know that like someday they're going to regret it. So it's like, fuck you, man, whatever. Ripping shots today. The question was, I I tried to do a thing. It's funny. I tried to do a thing that was like, uh, what's something you got in trouble for uh, in your relationship? Like, because I think that, you know, people, (laughs) like there's only so many scenarios in life as an adult where you get in trouble, right? Because you're not, because you're a fucking adult. But it's funny that like in a relationship, you can get in trouble. And I don't mean for like cheating or talking to someone. Obviously, that's something that gets you in trouble. But like you can go out for too many beers after Park League softball and get in trouble. And that's the funniest thing in the world to me. But anyways, I tried to do that for ripping shots. And uh, listen, I kind of winged it today. So no one replied. I posted it this morning and got zero replies. So I fucking deleted it and changed the question to what's the biggest difference between men and women? Because, you know, that makes perfect fucking sense. It's easy peasy. Everyone's got an opinion on it. Here we go. Cameron from Morris says, friendships. Women will get into an argument with a longtime friend and dissolve the friendship over a little argument. Men will get into an argument, be pissed off for a little bit, but either fight or talk it out. Uh, Yeah, fight or talk it out or just fucking not do either and forget about it. But yeah, uh, women are fucking lunatics when it comes to like holding grudges, you know, um... Uh, men don't give a fuck, dude. I don't, I don't stay mad about anything for more than fucking five minutes. You know what I mean? Um, we, men go to bed. I will go to bed mad and I will wake up like nothing ever fucking happened. Ashley will go to bed mad seven days in a row. If I don't like, <laughs> if I don't like come head first into whatever it is she's mad about and be like, we need to talk about this. So, you know, uh, yeah, that's, that's a, that's a good one. That's a, that's a significant difference. Good, good fucking job. Cameron from Morris. I think that's the first, uh, it's a first time response from Cameron. Great job, buddy. Dave from Plainfield says women have longer memories than men. Wife remembers shit from 2000. Like it was yesterday. Yeah. That's no fucking joke, dude. Uh, but I, I tell Ashley all the time, you bring it up, stop bringing up old shit. You know what I mean? Like we will have an argument about a thing that is prevalent in the moment. I think prevalent is a word. I have no fucking clue, but it's like a real thing that's happening in the moment. And I will make my point like, Hey, you're doing this thing or you did this and it's fucked up. And what the fuck, man? And she will bring up some shit from a year ago that I did that is similar. Excuse me. My goodness. That is similar. And I got to tell you, that's not, it's like, it's like, so my point is like, if you're a dude and you do something wrong, a woman will use that as like a get out of jail free card forever, forever. And my point is, and here's the thing, like, so when I did it a year ago, I heard about it for fucking three days. You know what I'm saying? Whatever it was, I'm not thinking of anything in particular. I'm just saying in general, heard about it for three days. I'm getting bitched at about this thing. So to me, like, that's my punishment. The three days of suffering is like, that's me being punished for the thing that I did that was fucked up, whatever. Then fast forward a year later, she does a similar kind of thing and I'm mad and she just brings up the old thing as like, well, you did it once too. And I see your point, but it should be tit for tat, not tit for tat, 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 tat. You know what I'm saying? A guy's fuck up allows a girl a fucking zillion fuck ups, uh, in my humble opinion. But whatever. We got to keep rolling. I, I could talk about that all fucking day long. Danita from Braidwood says sensitivity. Unfortunately, men are taught when they're little that being emotional is bad, blah, blah, blah. I wish guys would be more sensitive. Here's the fucking thing, Danita. And I'm going to tell you. I, I know some sensitive guys and I am friends with a lot of girls and you know, women come in the bar and whatever. And I'll talk to them. Women fucking hate sensitive men. So you can be like, I just want to <laughs> girls will be like, I want a real sensitive guy until they got a real sensitive guy. And then do you know what they do? They bitch about their sensitive guy and wish he would just be a fucking man. You know what I'm saying? So say, I know what you mean. You, you just want whatever works best for you in the moment. If in the moment you need your man to be sensitive, you want him to be sensitive. And, but no one wants a guy that's sensitive all the time. <laughs> nobody cares about a man's problems. When you're a man, nobody cares about your problems. You know what I mean? It's, I've got like grown men friends and they will, 
they don't tell me their problems and I don't tell my friends my problems because nobody wants to fucking hear it because you're a man. And the, the idea, my point is when you're a man, it's just like fucking deal with it, dude. You know what I mean? Be a man and deal with your fucking problems. <laughs> Stuff that shit down. Stuff those emotions down deep. You know what I mean? Nobody, nobody wants to hear a man get sensitive about some whatever the fuck ever. Nobody, nobody wants that. So you might think you want that, Danita, but I promise if you had it, you would bitch every day and you would cheat on him with like a lumberjack. You know what I mean? <laughs> and then the last one, Sherry, I don't, I don't know where she's from. She said, and this is pretty profound. She said, women use sex for love and men use love for sex. Uh, I've heard that before. I mean, it's like a, it's like a saying, you know what I mean? Like, uh, like it is what it is or fucking, uh, you know, <laughs> I, I don't know, whatever money, hose and clothes, but fucking, uh, it's a generalization and obviously there's exceptions to the rule, but that is true. Um, and I think where you see it the most is after a couple's married for a while and the wife and this is just, this is just my experience. I'm not, every time I say something, people come at me with like, I didn't do that ever when I was a wife, blah, blah, blah. I'm not saying everyone in the world. So just so, so we're fucking clear. But the point is sometimes like, the, I think where you see it the most is in couples where they get married and then after a few years, like the man has to work for the sex. You know what I mean? Sex, sex is an event when you're a married man. You know what I mean? And, and, uh, and when you're a wife, you will like use it as leverage. You know what I mean? Um, and I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm not saying that's true for everyone, but you know, women will use sex as leverage when they're, when they're married. Um, and, uh, I don't know. It's fucked up. You, you, you bitches are fucked up, man. Although, uh, although I don't know, I shouldn't say, I, I could tell you right now, like if Ashley was listening to this, she'd be like, you're so full of shit. Cause Ashley, um, you know, Ashley is like, Ashley is always attracted to me and like down to pound. You know what I mean? Like she, she, it's not uh, Ashley never does this to me, so I'm not trying to say that. Um, and she probably would even argue that I do it to her, but I don't. I just sometimes am tired or crabby or whatever. But anyways, let's rip this second shot. Oh, so good. Pink Whitney. Pink Whitney. All right, now, usually this is the point in the show where we would make a cocktail. And my plan was to make an um, old-fashioned, which is my favorite. It's my favorite drink. And um, uh, Brian from My Buddies gave me some... Some Bardstown uh, Fusion Series bourbon, and I was gonna make a, I was gonna make a, a old fashioned with it, but they have it on tap here, so they've got old fashions on tap, and I made a video and I'll post it in the comments, link in the bio. I don't know what that means, but I'll I'll make it so you can see it. But the point is, uh, they've got like old fashioned on tap. They literally just like get the orange peel. And, you know, they, 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 they give the glass the old rim job, hashtag prison rules, and then fucking uh, they just pour it right in, dude, and it's unbelievable. And I, uh, I don't know, like I said, I'll, make, I'll, I'll post a video. It's slick as fuck, but I'm drinking an old-fashioned. If you want to make your own old-fashioned, I'm going to tell you the best way to do it is the simplest way. The fewer ingredients, the better. And here's what you fucking do. You get a glass. You cover the bottom of the glass with... Uh, simple syrup so just enough simple syrup to cover the bottom of the glass a glass like this a rock glass and then you put in about three dashes of bitters and then you just add bourbon and you give it a stir and you put it in an ice cube and and then you put in your uh, your orange your orange peel and that's the best way to do it um people talk about people muddle cherries and fucking you know add some soda or sprite or whatever the fuck that's all done the fewer the ingredients the better with almost any drink in the fucking world. So that's, uh, you know, there's, there's a tip for how to make the perfect old fashioned from old HRK. Anyways, <coughs> my goodness, allergy season. So, uh, like I said, I was going to have Jenna on today and she fucking, uh, well, I was going to have Dario and that didn't work out. And then I, th I wasn't, say I shouldn't say I was going to have her on, but I, I like last minute was like, Hey, I want to party. And she was like, no, but she sent me some questions from her, fa you know, fans of her show. You know, so I was just like, send me some questions so I have something to fucking talk about. So I'm going to do some uh, Q&A relationship advice from, from your guy. And listen, nobody's worse at relationships in the world than me, but I do give good advice. You know what I mean? A fucking a lifetime of poor decisions. 
Also, last time I had Jenna on, she said I should do a segment called Poor Decisions. Because it's a play on words, you know, when you're a bartender, you pour a drink, so Poor Decisions. Um, so let's just fucking call this Poor Decisions. I don't know. Let's go. Renee. I'm just going to say. Jenna sends me these things like she copies and pastes them or whatever. And this is how the people send her the questions. And it says Renee. And then there's parentheses. And it says he slash him 32. I mean, I don't know. I guess if you got a name like Renee, maybe he, him makes sense. I would just be like Renee, parentheses, I'm a boy, but whatever. But literally everyone is fucking he, him, she, her. It's so dumb. Anyways, Renee, he, him, 32. (laughs) I can't even say with a fucking straight face. Says, my boyfriend and I are eight years apart. He's younger. We have been dating for two years. He's successful for his age. I don't know what the fuck that means. Okay, 32, so eight years. He's got to be, fuck, I'm so bad at this. 31, 30, and then that leaves six, so 24 maybe? I don't know. Let's say he's 24. So he's successful for his age. Well, okay, for a 24-year-old, yeah, I get it. He's got some money. Sounds like he's the breadwinner, Renee. Why don't you fucking get your shit together? We've been dating for two years. He's successful, blah, blah, blah. Adores me and our dog. (laughs) What a gay couple thing to say. Uh, We have the same views on life. I catch a lot of shit for his friends and family who think he's way too young for me. 32 and 24 isn't so fucking such a big deal, but whatever. I mean, I feel like if you're 32, you're still pretty young. But anyways, uh, and if I'm being honest, sometimes I do too when he does annoying things like stay out super late and comes home drunk when I have to work in the morning. Uh, Listen, Renee, if he doesn't have to fucking work in the morning, then he can come home as late as he fuck, whatever. This is Jesus Christ. My question is, do you think this type of relationship can work? Uh, no, man, no. It doesn't, if, 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 if what I'm hearing is, I mean, the age difference isn't, isn't a problem. And obviously, it sounds like you guys get along. But if he, here's the problem. It sounds like he wants to be out at night partying because he's 24 years old. And you want to be home with the dog watching Jeopardy because you're 32, which, for the record, I'm fucking 41 and I want to be out partying. So maybe you should ungrow up or whatever the fuck. But no. No, you, it, it's never going to work. I'm not saying you should break up. You know what I mean? I, I, think, those, I, think, I think those relationships that are never going to work are still worthwhile. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can still have fun, you know, a, a, a date for a year or two. You know what I mean? You, you, whatever. You'll grow as people. It'll be fun. It'll be a good experience. But it's never going to, it's never going to last uh, because, because you're going to be mad at him for being out. It, and he's going to be mad at you for being mad at him. And that's just the fucking way it goes. Also, I didn't rip my second shot, so let's do that now. Pink Whitney. Yeah, so no, no, it's never going to work. Uh, but again, I'm not saying break up. I think, you should, uh, I think you should ride it out for as long as you can until you fucking hate each other so much. Not hate, resent. Resent each other so much that the wheels fall off. And then you can just argue about who gets the dog and, um, you know, whatever. Noah, 27, he slash him. Thanks, Noah. I thought maybe you were a girl with a name like Noah. So fucking dumb. Anyways, I got out of a two-year relationship with someone I thought I was going to spend the rest of my life with. Well, that's a dumb thought. Because anytime you think you're going to spend the rest of your life with someone and you're 27 years old, let me just tell you, you're fucking, you're ignoring every statistic in the world. <coughs> Like, you know, you're not going to spend the rest of your life with anyone until you're on your deathbed and people come to visit you and you've got 30 seconds left. Those are the people you're going to spend the rest of your life with. (laughs) Anyways, let's get back to Noah's fucking Noah's question. My heart was completely broken. Oh God, nobody, whatever. Then one night I met a new girl who was supposed to be just a rebound, someone to spend some time with when I needed to expletive uh and have company but she's grown on me and i think i might have feelings for her i think i might have feelings for her what what does that even mean you you think you you don't know if you have feelings or not if you if you have feelings you sound like an idiot anyways whatever noah let's go i've only been out of the relationship for four months so okay okay so i'm confused on whether a new girl blah 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 well here's the thing 
I think that it takes like a week per month of uh, to get over a relationship. So if you're in a one month relationship, I think it takes a week to get over. If you're in a year relationship, uh, it takes 12 weeks. I think a two year relationship, you know, fucking uh, 24 weeks, man. That's what I think it takes. I think you got to spend that time, uh, you know, getting over, getting over whatever the fuck it is you got to get over. And I'm not saying you shouldn't, um, you shouldn't date during that whole time. And I'm not saying you shouldn't, uh, shouldn't, you you certainly should bang girls during that time, but you should not, uh, you should not consider a serious relationship. And here's the thing, Noah, if you're writing into a show to talk about if you're ready or not to be with this person that you think is great, whatever, blah, 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 you're not ready. You know what I mean? Because if you were ready, you wouldn't, get, you wouldn't think anything about it. You would, you know, you're, my point is you're still thinking about your ex and that's normal and it's natural. One week per month, you need to stay single to get over a breakup and, and that's the minimum. Sometimes it's more than that. So yeah, Noah, um, she's probably great, but it's in the timings. It's not right. Um, whatever. Last one, Ashland. She, her, where do you, but I swear to God, I, these people must be from Chicago with these names like Ashland, <laughs> whatever, she, her. It's funny, I was making fun of she, her, he, him, but Renee was he, him, and Ashland, which I would have no fucking clue if that's a boy or a girl, is she, her. So maybe it makes sense, and maybe I'm the fucking asshole. Anyways, Ashland says, my partner and I have been dating for a little over a year now. And if I had to score it, <laughs> she said, if I had to score it, oh my God, I'm so glad she said it. I could do a whole show about women keeping score. Women love to keep score, man. If I had to score it, bitch, you've been scoring it since the day you met that guy. The fuck out of here. If women could shoot and dribble as good as they kept score, we wouldn't need a fucking WNBA. If I had to score it, I'd say our relationship as a whole is about a solid eight on a one to tail one to one to ten scale. Oh well, I just did a whole rant about what I thought she meant by score, and uh, I was wrong. <laughs> so sorry, Ashland. She her. <laughs> oh, it's an eight. The sex, however, is about a five. Ooh, this is good. I love this. This is juicy. Fucking a. It's good because the feelings are strong, but I'd say I. O word. I don't like to say that word out loud. I think it's weird. I think the O word and the C word are weird to say out loud. Like even in comedy, when a comedian gets up and says the C word, not not see you next Tuesday, the one that you know makes you give your O face, whatever. It makes me uneasy. So I don't know. But she, uh, you know, she 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 blows it. Do girls blow it? Guys blow it. I don't know. Thirty percent of the time. So, you know, we'll, we'll call that, we'll, we'll say, the, we'll call that once a week. I know how to get myself there. Well, if, if, congratulations for knowing how to get yourself there. <laughs> every, every person over the age of fucking 14 knows how to get themselves there. You, anyways, uh, so I've been going into the bathroom after to clean up, but really I'm in there masturbating so a gal can get hers. Okay. I think things could be better if I could direct him. So my question to you is, how do I ask for this? How do you ask for the sex you want? Well, you're, uh, you didn't put your age. Here's the thing. If you're like 25, I shouldn't even make this about age. Uh, yeah, fucking ask for it. You don't have to be like, hey, we need to go to dinner and have a, you don't have to schedule a meeting. You know what I mean? Maybe just like while he's doing it, be like, Hey, can you do this? You know what I mean? I mean, I've been like working on a girl and she's, and she'll be like, no, 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 no. A little to the left, like right there, whatever. Uh, pull my hair. What, what, like whatever the thing is that like a girl wants. I've had someone tell me that it's not offensive. You know, I'm telling you ladies, I think guys mostly just want to do it right. You know, we mostly just want to do what you like. So, uh, if, if he's not doing what you like, he, the problem is he probably thinks that he is doing what you like. You know what I mean? Because you've probably been faking it for fucking however long you've been together. 
Uh, and that's okay. You can rebound, but just tell him. Like, next time he's banging you, just be like, bang me this way or whatever. You know what I mean? That's all. He'll be happy to know that he's doing the thing that you like to do. Because if you're a realist, you know that, like, you're not – everyone is a little bit different in the way that they like to do bedroom stuff. So you can be good – in the bedroom for one person and then bad in the bedroom for another person is my point. So it's not like, it's not like he is universally bad in bed. So he's not going to be offended if he's smart. He'll just know like, okay, she likes it this way. So I'll do it this way. But yeah, just my advice is do it while he's doing the thing, whatever. I don't know if it's his, if it's his face between your legs or if it's, you know, some, some, some you on top, him on top action, doggy reverse coward, whatever the fuck on the kitchen sink, whatever, you know what I mean? Whatever your spiel is, I would say while it's happening, give him instructions while it's happening. That's my advice. That's how old HRK would do it. Uh, let's, let's knock this old fashioned out. Oh, so good. Uh, yeah. So, you know, old HRK coming at you from my buddies, downtown Chicago. I'm probably going to have a little day cause I feel like I earned it. Um, I feel like I earned it. I, I literally go out almost every day. Um, it's funny because I'm a dr- like Ashley's mad at me right now about my my going out in this. Uh, it's funny how guys will be in trouble. <laughs> you know what I mean? Isn't it funny how you can be in trouble as a guy? Like, like when you're an adult, how many things can you be in trouble for? You know what I'm saying? You can be in trouble at work, right? You can be in trouble. <laughs> You know, I don't know, like, when you're a kid, you're in trouble all the time. Your teacher can get mad at you, your principal, whatever the fuck. My point is, when you're an adult, the idea of getting in trouble is fucking hilarious. But I find myself in trouble all the time. Every, not every day, but like, certainly a couple times a week, I'm in trouble. In trouble. Um, And I don't know, it's a funny fucking, it's a funny dynamic. You know, you're a grown man and here you are, like a a married dude's like, well, you'll you'll go golf 18 and then you have a few beers and you're like, I got to get home or I'm going to be in trouble. What a funny idea, man. You know, if, uh, if 1862 pioneers, you know, like if, 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 if the characters on the Oregon Trail video game that we played in uh, computer class in junior high could see us now. (laughs) They would be ashamed. <laughs> I don't want to hear shit about equal rights when a man can be in trouble from his wife for not being home when he's supposed to be home. <laughs> you know what I mean? In 1860, if Betty burned the beans, she was in big fucking trouble. Nowadays, if, you know, Tyler doesn't get home on time from, from softball league, then he's in trouble. Uh, let's make a last call. Last call. All right, folks, let's wrap this thing up. Hashtag prom night. <coughs> Speaking of, it's, it's funny how, like, when you're young, you wear condoms. <laughs> when you're old, you're like, ah, fuck it. But uh, if you were logical, you would not worry so much when you're young because, you know, whatever. And then when you're old, you'd be more precautious, but whatever. Precautious? I don't know if that's a word. I'm certain it's not. Last call for alcohol. Uh, a couple of points. Number one, come see me Thursday at fucking uh, at the Forge. I'm going to be great. I promise. I'm only using jokes that I know work. So that's the best time to see me. Um, if you want to watch me experiment with some new stuff and probably bomb, then come the following Thursday to Mojo's. But we'll, we'll plug that shit next week. Um, number two, fucking uh, I, <laughs> I don't fucking know. I'm drunk as shit right now. I drink an old fashioned. Old fashions will fuck you up. Number two, come to my buddies. If you live in the Chicago area and you've never been to my buddies, come check it out. It's a great bar. And then number three, um, you know, stop, uh, stop getting mad at your at your man for all the things that he does all the time because it is what it is. We are who we are it's never going to change you know we're just we're creatures of habit and uh um, you know just can't you just learn to love us for you know the dumb shits that 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 we 
are. I don't know. With that, let's uh, let's wrap this up. That was the worst uh, last call ending I've ever done. But hey, it's old HRK here saying take care of yourselves and take care of each other. Coming at you live recorded from my buddies and fucking uh, we'll see you next time on The Perfect Drink. Thanks for listening to The Perfect Drink. Remember, you can always hear me first on Be Positive Radio every Monday at 1 p.m. If you miss me there, all episodes are available on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and anywhere else you might listen to your podcasts. Be sure to like, subscribe, and tell a friend. If you're interested in being a guest on the show or you just want to tell me how much you like me, feel free to send me an email at hrkpresents at gmail.com or just slide into my DMs like your mom does. See you next time.